Hi, my name is Rick Mello, Senior Technical Service Representative for Haldex. In this short video, I'm going to be discussing the air brake systems found in both a truck and a tractor unit. In the, my demonstration board I'll be using, it will be a combination vehicle considered to be both a truck tractor. Okay. The heart of the air brake system is the air compressor. The compressor's job is to take in atmospheric air, compress it, and pump it out to the rest of the system. Out of the top of the compressor is the discharge line. Hot compressed air comes out and goes to the, our first component is our pre-cleaner. Haldex, we call it the concept, the condenser separator. Its job is first to cool the air. When you cool the air, it condenses and you squeeze out the large particles of moisture before it hits the air dryer. Also inside the concept is like a corkscrew device. It causes the air to come in the top side port, spins the air, and centrifugal force moves the water particles out towards the sides. And since it has cooling fins, this helps cool the air to condense it. It also throws some of the large particles of uh, contamination also out. It then goes downward to the purge valve area and then those particles or those contamination particles are too heavy to come back up and out the discharge of the concept. Out of the concept into the air dryer. The air dryer's job is to take out any additional moisture in the air using desiccant beads found in the cartridge. Out of the air dryer we then go into our supply tank which is also known in the industry as the wet tank. How the supply tank got its nickname, the wet tank, was from an earlier day before there were air dryers. And so all the condensation or the condensing took place in the wet tank. And that's how it got its name. That's where most of the moisture collected. And to get rid of that moisture, all reservoirs are required to have a manual means of draining. Also found on the wet tank in this demo is the low air warning switch and a pop-off safety valve. The pop-off safety valve is an industry standard and the industry standard is that it will open and relieve pressure if it builds over 150 psi. The low air warning switch is connected to a device inside the cab to warn the driver of potential low air condition. The regulation says with the ignition on and less than 60 psi in the service reservoirs, the driver must be alerted either by one or two ways. It must be visual or it can be audible visual. And in most cases, vehicles are now equipped with what they call combination buzz lights, which I'll demonstrate a failure. This alerts the driver of that potential low air condition. The next system we're going to talk about is the front brakes. They're also known as the secondary service brake system. So out of the wet tank, we're going to send air to the secondary reservoir. We are required by law to protect that reservoir from a failure of its source, which in this case is the wet tank, through a one-way check valve. The service reservoir tanks are required to be gauged, and these gauges will be found in the dash in uh, clear view of the driver. Uh, their accuracy only has to be 10% of system cutout, which means uh, about a plus and minus 7 PSI. We are then going to supply the furthest point from the foot pedal with air. That is going to be the secondary brake system location. Sometimes the foot valves are uh, mounted in a horizontal position or actually upside down or inverted. So I say from the furthest point from the pedal is going to be the secondary brake system. So we supply the foot valve with air. The driver then applies foot pressure, which in turn allows that reservoir air to go up to the front axle. And what we're going to find is a quick release valve historically on the front axle. It's going to divert that air in two directions, the right chamber and the left service brake chamber. We're also going to find two anti-lock brake valves here. 
they are known as inline uh, ABS valves on a truck and tractor. This type here is referred to as a cluster valve because the two ABS valves are mounted directly to the quick release valve. So as we apply the front brakes, we then put air to the brake chambers and the automatic brake adjusters are applied in direct proportion of how much air is delivered from the foot valve. So when the driver releases the foot control valve, all the air that was delivered from the foot control valve to the quick release valve, this section right here, is going to be quickly released out the bottom of the foot valve and all the air that's built up in the chambers is going to be quickly released out the quick release valve. So when this air is released out the bottom of the foot valve, it allows then this delivered chamber air to be quickly released here. If this valve was not available, all the air in the brake chambers would have to go all the way back to the quick release feature built into the foot valve and this would take a substantial amount of time and there would be a slight brake drag. The next system is going to be the primary rear brakes. Um, so we're going to go out of that wet tank and we're going to tee off and go into the primary reservoir and it is also required to be gauged so the driver knows the air pressure within his two service reservoirs. In some cases you'll have two separate gauges on the dashboard and sometimes you'll have a single gauge with two needles. Out of that primary reservoir we're going to feed the foot control valve right here with that reservoir. This way when the driver steps on the pedal he also sends that primary reservoir air back to a relay valve back here and this relay valve is going to then relay air out of that tank to the service reservoirs on the rear drive axle. The relay valve also has a quick release feature in it so that quick release valve or that quick release feature in the relay valve speeds up the release of the rear brakes just like the quick release valve speeds up the release of the front brakes but a relay valve has a piston and a reservoir hook to it so it also speeds up the application of the rear brakes. The reasoning for that is that the rear brakes in most cases are going to be further from the foot pedal than the front steer axle brakes. So it's going to require some speed up of application and in most cases you're going to find that the rear service brakes are larger than the front secondary brakes. So we're going to need more volume and in many cases you're going to find two axles for the drive axle meaning four brake chambers rather than just the two found on the front brakes. Now that we have both service tanks in the system we're going to add the park brake system and the park brake system on a truck you're going to find a single dash valve usually yellow in color for the control of the parking brakes. Now the parking brakes on a truck are going to be what we refer to as spring brakes because by 121 law you must park mechanically and spring brakes are a convenient way to do that. So also by 121 law it's required that if you fail either primary or the secondary brake system you still must be able to make at least one release of the parking spring brakes. So we are going to plumb both the primary and secondary brake reservoirs into the dash control valve. Now they're separated with a double check valve and it's built right into this dash control valve. So the double check valve will choose which brake system or which reservoir still has air or has the most air and it will prioritize to that reservoir. So in order to release these parking brakes now that we have full system pressure in our reservoirs I'm going to push to release the dash control valve to release the parking brakes. A parking spring brake chamber requires air to release whereas a service brake chamber found here and found here requires air to apply. To park this vehicle we just simply pull to park. What this does is it takes the air out of the chambers 
and release them right here at another relay valve. So the relay valve releases the air out of the spring chamber to park it. The air that is sent from the dash control valve, the yellow knob, is released out the bottom of the dash or push-pull park valve. Now there's two ways to apply the brakes on the drive axles. One is using the mechanical force of the spring as we have right here. The other way to apply the brakes on the rear drive axles is to use the service brake control, the foot pedal. If you use the spring brake to apply the brakes, you have a predetermined force on that to, uh, predicated off how much spring pressure there is in that chamber. If you were to now double up on these forces by putting air to the service chamber, as I'm demonstrating here, this would be, if we didn't have a special feature in the air system, this would cause a condition called compounding. You're using the spring and the service chamber to apply the brakes. But there is a special device built in, which we refer to as the anti-compounding system. And that's found right here on the spring brake relay valve, which is no more than just a double check valve that separates the push-pull valve from the foot valve. So if we are parked, meaning there's no air here at the control port for the spring brake release, and we apply the service brake using the foot valve, and we send it here, what it will do is it will release the parking brakes as you are applying the service relay valve. So the more you apply the service brakes, the more the spring brake or parking brake is released, and it prevents compounding of the two systems. We have a special valve on this truck, which Haldex refers to as the inversion valve. The inversion valve's purpose is in the event that we lose our primary rear brakes. This inversion valve will automatically look at the only good system, which in this case is going to be the front secondary system, and it has a control line from it tapped right into the front secondary brake system. It will allow or let the driver, when he applies the only brakes, which is the front brakes during a primary failure, the more he puts front brake service air here, the more the inversion will dump or release the air trapped on the spring brake side, and the spring brakes will become our emergency brake system in this condition. The reason we need this is there is a requirement, a stopping distance requirement, for the emergency brakes. Now the confusing part is most people think of the spring brakes as the emergency brakes, and they are not. They are parking brakes on a truck and a tractor. The emergency brake system since 1975 has been the dual air brake system, meaning having a separate primary brake system for the drive axles and a separate secondary brake system for the steer axles. Now, in order to meet this emergency stopping distance, when we fail our primary brakes, the only way we can do it, we can't do it with just two small brake chambers up in front, we need to modulate the spring brakes during this condition, and that's the purpose of the inversion valve. Let me demonstrate a primary rear brake system failure and how the inversion valve will function utilizing the secondary front brakes. So right now you can see by the two gauges on our service and parking brake chamber that the spring or parking brakes have air and they are released simulating driving down the road. I'm now going to fail the primary brake tank and I want you to observe how the parking brakes remain released. You will have noticed that you will have noticed that the wet or supply tank goes down with the primary brake system tank. 
but we still maintain air in our secondary brake system and we still maintain air in our park brakes holding them in the released mode. Now let's convert this or change this into a tractor vehicle. Now a tractor, the difference between a truck and a tractor, a tractor is designed to tow a trailer. There are vehicles known both as a truck slash tractor and that's what this demo board is. So this truck tractor can on its own uh, deliver payloads such as a dump truck and then hook onto a trailer so it has to have all the devices required for both vehicles. So what we have to add to this to make it into a tractor is another dash control valve. It's usually red in color. Now this red knob then becomes most of its purposes for the trailer. Number one, as we push to release air from the tractor to the trailer, it becomes a trailer supply valve. It supplies air to the trailer's air tanks. It also controls the parking brakes on the trailer. There's another system on the trailer called an emergency brakes. And in most cases, most trailers' emergency brake system is the same brakes as the parking brakes. And in this case, we're going to say spring brakes. So this is also an emergency brake control valve. There's an additional valve needed on a tractor and that is this valve right here which is called the tractor protection valve. Now the tractor protection valve's job is really as simple as opening and closing the blue lad hand at the back of the tractor. And what tells this or controls this valve to do this is this red knob. So when we push this red knob in to send air back to the trailer, as it goes to the bottom section of this tractor protection valve, it opens the blue control service glad hands. If I want to close or shut off that blue glad hand, I simply pull to park the trailer and close that blue glad hand. In this condition, with the park brakes released on the trailer, as I step on the foot control valve, it allows air to go through the open tractor protection valve to the trailer. But if I want to stop that air from going back to the trailer, right now it's open. If I pull to park the trailer, I also shut off the blue glad hand. This would be a condition where this tractor is not pulling a trailer, so both glad hands are open to atmosphere, and now the tractor is an independent vehicle from the trailer. Not all, but some tractor vehicles have an auxiliary control for the trailer's service brakes only, referred to as a hand control valve. This valve can be supplied with air from either of our service reservoirs, or both, depending on how it's plumbed. In this case, on our demo board, we have a special auxiliary port at the bottom of our manifold dash valve that will take air out of either of these tanks, depending on which one has the most pressure. And it will supply air to the hand control valve. This way, the driver has independent service brake control for the trailer brakes only by applying the hand control valve independent of the foot control valve. But required by 121 law, you must be able to operate all the service brakes in the entire, entire combination vehicle using the normal means of braking, which in this case is our foot control valve.